I welcome all of you again here on the session. So let's begin our uh, journey about pi. All of you know what pi is, right? I mean, it is a edible dessert, usually circular in shape. There will be some delicious sweet stuffing inside it, typically made up of apples. And it will be covered by some big crust, right? After looking at this picture, I'm pretty sure that you feel like eating it immediately, right? But I'm sorry. This is not the pie that we are going to talk about. The pie that we are going to talk about is going to be the mathematical constant pie. Okay. I am extremely sorry to disappoint all of you. So let's see what this mathematical constant pi is. Actually, this constant is so important that even after it was known to people for last 4000 years, it is still included in the school textbooks. Don't you think this itself tells us the legacy of pi, correct? So the textbook definition tells us that you take a circle with circumference C and diameter D. You divide this circumference by diameter, you will get some number. This number, whatever it is, you don't know a priori right now what it is because I haven't told you what is circumference and what is the diameter of that circle, right? So whatever this number is, we are going to call it as pi. Um, now question here is, if I give you two circles of various uh, sizes, then of course their circumference will change, their diameters will change. And of course I will have these two uh, ratios, right? Let's say C1 by D1 and C2 by D2. What is your case? Will these two ratios be same? So apparently that is the case. So the two ratios that you will get, they are going to be very, very close to each other. But why should you believe uh, such thing, right? Just because I'm telling this to you? No. So uh, let's try to work out some experiments. So here we have Mohammed Taki from Science Activity Center. And uh, now we are going to compute this uh, ratio of circumference by diameter of this glass. Okay. We have wrapped around the thread around the circle. And now we will measure the circumference by measuring the length of the thread. So it looks like it's coming up to 21 centimeter. Now let's try to compute the diameter of the circle. This is approximately, I believe, 6.7 centimeters. Now the ratio comes out to be 3.143. Okay. Now see that this circle has smaller size than the previous circle. Again, we will repeat the procedure. We are now again computing the length of the thread, which is circumference and the diameter, which was 5 centimeter. We will do this activity for various sizes of circles. The diameter and the circumference is computed and the ratio is 3.11. As you can see, although these numbers are different, but they are very close to each other. And I actually request all of you to find something in your house, which is of circular uh, shape and uh, try to do this activity and uh, try to find out what more you can get. Now let's go through the historical timeline of pi, okay? And uh, I'm sure uh, we all love uh, uh, knowing history behind uh, such mathematical concepts, right? As I already mentioned you that this pi was already known to uh, people for more than 4,000 years. So we have to go back to the most ancient civilizations and prominently there were two such uh, who were mathematically very advanced. One of them were Babylonians and another were Egyptians. Apparently, in 1900 BC, Egyptians knew how to compute circumference of a circle. But they knew that there is such a constant and they also knew that that has to be close to 3. So, just to give you idea, the era that we are speaking about is the era when uh, humans for the first time started using iron. It was the era when the last mammoth on the earth became extinct. So can you believe that the civilizations were so mathematically advanced at that time? Isn't it mind blowing? Let me fast forward a little bit and from 1900 BC 
let's come to 200 ad okay so in the second century there was a legendary mathematician and physicist and all of you are aware of him archimedes right i am sure in your school uh, somewhere or the other you have seen the mathematical contributions and the science contributions given by archimedes he proved that this constant pi is actually bounded by two numbers but i have this question i mean okay i have circle i have i can measure circumference i can measure diameter but i know that there is this ratio okay but how can I actually compute what this constant is right because see sometimes measuring a circular figure uh, or a surface can be very tricky right so how can one come to such type of estimate right or approximation so to speak so trick here is that we do little bit of cheating okay so what kind of cheating so instead of using circle we will use square or we will use regular polygons of sides more than maybe 5 6 7 and so on. and as we go on increasing the number of sides of this regular polygon you can see that actually that polygon starts taking a shape closer to a circle okay so rather than working with the circle we will start working with this polygons okay and that's precisely the idea that archimedes proposed and that is and that is called as archimedes method of approximation of so here is the idea uh let's suppose we are given a circle and uh, we will fit a polygon inside that circle similarly we will we will take another polygon but with same number of sides as the inside polygon but little bigger in size which will actually cover the circle now as you can see in the first figure here uh i have taken polygon with five sides correct but you can see that the distance between the inner uh side of the polygon and the circle is more okay let's try to increase number of sides of this polygon okay you can see that now the distance has reduced again i will increase number of sides of this polygon okay again the distance has further reduced correct so this is the method to actually approximate this circle from outside and from inside okay but what this has to do with our pi so point is that as you can see in this figure that circumference of the circle is actually trapped between perimeters of these two polygons right so if i call p1 as perimeter of the inside polygon c as circumference of the circle and p2 as perimeter of the outer polygon then you have this inequality that p1 is less than c is strictly less than p2 correct now what is our constant pi our constant pi is nothing but circumference divided by d correct so i will divide by d throughout okay and then you can see that actually pi is trapped between these two things p1 by d and p2 by d correct so archimedes was able to determine that this pi is trapped between two such ratios which were 223 divided by 71 and 22 by 7 so here comes your well known number 22 by 7 okay so as you can see that pi is a uh, value of pi is bounded by 22 by 7 okay so archimedes was able to achieve this when he finally reached using the polygon of 96 lines sides okay um i am pretty sure that uh you you are already aware of lots of other uh, contributions of archimedes to science okay in fact he was a great physicist astrophysicist he tried to study motion of the sun the moon and the planets okay and of course i am aware that you all uh, know his uh, famous story of leaping from his bath and running in all those states on the streets uh, shouting eureka eureka right so i don't have to tell you more about it um, there is one sad story attached to this so it is believed that actually the 
approximation of pi was his last contribution to the science. Okay. It was believed that he was killed by uh, Roman soldiers when his city was invaded by them. And apparently when he got killed, he was actually doing calculations with the circles and pi. Now let's proceed and let's try to see. After Archimedes' contribution to pi, what more we have understood about it? So in between Archimedes' era, which is like a second century and a fourth century, in between there were many Chinese mathematicians who uh, tried to give better and better approximations for pi. Okay. The idea that they used was same, the approximations by polygons. But point is that instead of using circumference, they used area. So you tell me if I explain you some method like this, okay. So concept is now understood. But if I want to write it down, okay, in order to use it again or to explain it to someone, isn't it little awkward that I will keep on telling you take a polygon of this side, that side and so on, right. So is there a better way to explain this thing, okay. And this problem was resolved by efforts of our uh, Indian mathematicians. So at that time, there were like three uh, mathematical superpowers, I would say China, India and Persia, okay. Um, so as I said, Chinese mathematicians, of course, they contributed to approximation of pi by using area instead of circumference. But the key idea of actually giving another representation of this pi was due to our Indian mathematician Aryabhatta. Okay. He was born in Patliputra. And if you are aware, at that time, people used to uh, write and speak in Sanskrit. So he was the first one who actually uh, gave the notion of place value notation. He told us that any number can be expressed by using just 10 symbols like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's it. Okay. And in fact, he also proved that the value of the number is decided by the place uh, of that number. Of course, he was uh, aware of uh, the concept of zero. I mean, he did not use the symbol zero that we are using now, but he, he used a word for uh, explaining that void or that emptiness. So for explaining this uh, place value notation, he wrote a poem in Sanskrit and that has 121 verses. Okay. Um, he was able to compute pi up to four digits, which is 3.1415. Uh, okay. Let me also mention you that Aryabhatta was again one of the finest uh, mathematician uh, India has produced. He was also a great astrophysicist. I mean, his sign tables were widely used in calculating uh, distances between planets. His approximation of pi now tells us that if you take the circumference of any circle, then it is slightly above three times the diameter of the circle. Okay. So uh, let's see whether in our real life we can actually verify this. So here we have Sushan from Science Activity Center. We are now trying to compute the diameter of this wheel. For that we have used this pendulum. Now we are measuring the length of this thread, which is the diameter of the wheel. We have marked it on our scale. And on the road we have now made four or five such marks. Now we are wrapping the thread around this wheel to measure the circumference of this circle. I am pretty sure what uh, he is doing here with the wheel and the thread, you can do it with even a smaller bangle if you have in your house. Now let's unwrap the thread, which is the correct measure of the circumference. Let's see how many marks it's actually covering. So it's covering one, two, three. So this actually tells us that what 
uh, Aryabhatta predicted that circumference is little over three times the diameter is actually absolutely correct. Another key ideas uh, given by Indian mathematician Madhava of Sangamagrama. He was uh, supposed to be the pioneer of Kerala school of mathematics. Okay, And this school has actually produced a chain of brilliant mathematicians. Okay, So, in 14th century, Madhava introduced the idea of representing a function by a series. Okay, Of course, people believe that even Archimedes were aware of a series. Okay? So, let me explain you what series is. Okay, So, it is sum of you take one term, add another term to it, add another term, add another term and you just go on doing that. So, it is just the sum of infinitely many terms. Okay. Point is that if I give you such an infinite sum, how will you make sense of it? Okay, Because after some words, we usually write dot dot dot. Correct? So, there are no specific numbers. So, how will you calculate this sum? Correct? Nevertheless, what you can do is you can always compute the sum of finite limit terms, right? So, okay, let's start with taking sum of first two numbers, then sum of first three numbers, sum of first four numbers, and you go on increasing the terms. You can always do the sum of finite limit terms, okay? And of course, you will start getting larger and larger terms in the sum, right? Point is that when the contributions of the terms in the series become smaller and smaller. It is believed that such an infinite series actually is very close to some number. It reaches very close to some number. Okay? And that's exactly what Madhava did. Instead of using the earlier approximation theory, he was the first one to represent pi in terms of a series. In fact, he was the first ever mathematician to write down a function in terms of a series. Okay? So, this all happened in the 14th century, but towards the 17th century, his series became very popular with the name uh, Madhava Grigori Leibniz series. Okay. So, as you can see on the slide, uh, the form of this series. Okay. Another interpretation that quickly you can draw from this is that pi is equal to 4 times something that is an infinite thing. It tells you that pi never stops, right? It is a thing that you can actually write exactly equal to some number, some finite thing, correct? That's what it is also telling us. Uh, let me also take this opportunity to tell you Madhava was also uh, the first mathem mathematician to compute sine, cosine and tangents of angles, okay? Um, he was again one of the brilliant mathematicians uh, India had produced. So, let me go little ahead and let me catch the same thread. As I said, pi just goes on and on. Okay. People all around the world were crazy about uh, precise computations of the digits appearing in this constant. Okay. You won't believe, I mean, there are giant, super giant computers and people all over the world are trying to compute these uh, digits up to like billions, trillions uh, of the digits. Okay, but I believe that mathematicians are sensible people. They have living to make. Okay, so I think most of the time, what they have settled on is if if you want to use pi for any applications, considering value of pi up to sixteen digits is actually good enough. Okay, so here is just a small thing to bring. Uh, smile on your face. There is a small activity uh, which our uh, science activity center team has uh, developed to tell you that this uh, pi is just a infinite uh, string of digits where you can also observe that digits do not follow any pattern. Okay, They just pop randomly. Okay. Here we have Mosumi from Science Activity Center. As I told you that uh, the digits that occur in the representation of pi 
they don't follow any pattern right they just pop randomly so here what we have done is that we have given we have fixed one color code for 10 digits so for example here you can see 3 is given orange color 1 is given blue color 4 is given yellow color and by looking at the already computed uh, digits of pi we are going to meet this nice uh, string of colors so by looking at these strings you can easily see that no color pattern is repeated now here are some formulae that you have already seen in your textbooks right computing circumference area of circle computing surface area of cone uh, computing volume or sphere right now let me explain you some amazing facts about pi okay so as we were going through the historical timeline of uh, pi um, in 17th century uh, there was a welsh mathematician william june and he actually first introduced the symbol pi for this constant c over d okay so this symbol pi is not something randomly chosen but it actually represents the first letter of the greek word perimetros okay so this is the representation of p in greek okay and perimetros of course means circumference okay uh, again uh, another very amusing fact is that pi is not a rational number so pi can never be written as ratio of two integers okay so to speak we say that pi is an irrational number okay another interesting fact is that pi is a transcendental number pi cannot be seen as a root of a polynomial with rational coefficients okay if you haven't seen this word irrational or transcendental numbers don't be scared uh, i mean these are nice amusing facts in mathematics and i'm pretty sure you will encounter them later in your uh, curriculum okay um, so why we celebrate Pi Day on uh, 14th of March, okay? So if you closely look at uh, the digits of Pi, which is 3.14, something, something that goes on, right? So 3.14 can also be associated to the way of writing the date, okay? So if you write 14th March as 3 slash 14, then it actually represent the first three digits of representation of Pi. It is also Albert Einstein's birthday. Another uh, very amusing fact is this pi is very closely related to things or objects in nature. Right? For example, if you consider yourself as a bird flying in the sky and you are looking down at the landscape below. Okay. Imagine that there is a river which is uh, like with lots of bends uh, that you are looking at. Of course, there are two types of uh, distances you can take into account one is the actual uh, length of this river so nowadays of course by using gps and so on uh, we can easily compute such distances another distance is taking the distance between the starting point and the end point of the river which is a straight path correct now you take the ratio of the actual length of the river divided by this distance of the straight path this constant is actually called as sinusity of the river okay? and um, amazing fact is that if you look at this sinusity uh, factor or ratio of all the rivers in the world then it is observed that this ratio is actually bounded by our constant pi okay now let's uh, try to see uh, whether we see uh, pi in our everyday life if I want to summarize applications of pi, then let me just say that pi is everywhere, okay. It is all the way from understanding science of universe to calculating length of an atom. It is of course everywhere there in engineering, right, from constructing buildings, um, many other electrical applications. It is of course used in navigations in GPS. But there is a fun fact that I want to tell you about from biology. Okay, so in biological processes, this constant pi, uh, which itself has no pattern, right, but it plays a role in formation of pattern. Okay, so it is scientifically proven that the stripes of zebra 
have a size and spacing that is encoded by pi and the same goes for the spots on lipid. In fact, it seems that pi encodes the size and spacing of many patterns, not confined to just the field of biology. Okay, so I have given here uh, the address of the website, which is actually a biophysics society website and which tells you many more applications of pi in biology and also in medicines. Okay, so with this, I would like to uh, stop. So, so thank you so much for attending this session and uh, I believe that uh, from this session uh, many of you have got at least something to take away with you. Maybe it will be about history of pi or uh, how to compute the value of pi or how important it is in our daily life. So I believe that now onwards whenever you will uh, see this constant pi you will uh, remember this session. So thank you so much.